Hi everyone, welcome to Kick Vegan. So for those of you who are watching this on our Facebook group, you have an exclusive first view of this amazing interview and chat with Rachel Boone from the UK, um, all about skin conditions and how we can use nature um, in all its glory and what we can eat to get rid of skin conditions such as um, eczema, psoriasis, acne, and so much more. And for those of you who are tuning in on YouTube, that means that some of you might have already seen this on our Facebook group. Um, welcome to Cook Vegan YouTube channel. Do subscribe so that you can see more of this and do also follow Rachel on her various social media platforms. So without further ado, Rachel, thanks so much for coming back on to Cook Vegan. I am so excited about this interview. My pleasure, lovely to be here. Now we've already been gassing away. We got so excited guys, we've been chatting about 20 minutes before coming live to you all. Um, there's just so much um, to learn from Rachel and all she does. So we've had her on Cook Vegan before and we've discussed um, how we can use tinctures and um, essential oils basically, isn't it? Or is and juices, right we talked a lot about juices, juices last time, didn't we? Yeah. To help our healing path and so much more. We've actually been chatting about um, ways to heal thyroid issues, which is another conversation um, for another time. But right now we've got Rachel here. Um, I did talk to her a little bit in the past um, and that's where we got this idea for this, um, this particular um, interview in our series um, with skin conditions. So I don't know if you guys watching this are like myself um, that have been through acne. Um, I did not as a teenager, unfortunately, or not as a young teenager. I personally went through it when I was in my first year of uni, so 18, 19, um, all these um, lovely spots started coming up when I never had them before. And you know, within a week they were there and they were all under the skin, like proper boils on my face. And the doctors put me on, oh, horrible um, antibiotics for a while. That cleared up, but only for a bit. And of course I was leading a typical student unhealthy lifestyle. I have to say, I was very, very far from the healthy vegan I am now and then I had it a second time um when I was doing my master's so by then I was 21 years old and that time was horrific because I really got boils like proper boils and oh, I was just awful um and then going on further on in life um I had psoriasis um or I actually got psoriasis I told Rachel the first time when I was two years old so I don't even remember that but my mom said her heart just broke because she would grab my hand to take me somewhere and I would just cry because it was on my my nails and she took me to loads of doctors and no one could help and finally she went to a naturalist um uh who yeah gave me some homeopathic I think um medicine and it just went she said and then I didn't get it well for 10 years so a decade later I started to get it on my scalp and then it was just a different struggle that um would come out some years other years was better and finally after my first child and we were just discussing a few other shocks that happened I did get it quite badly and I went to the dead sea for treatment and going plant-based basically helped me an awful lot so um, that's my little history for those of you who don't know that I have told Rachel and on that note um, obviously there's so many youngsters as well and children that Rachel you see that you do help as well so why don't you tell us now um, that I've blabbered on and given um, a story that I think a lot of people can relate to and give us your professional um, views, opinions and what we can do to help ourselves. Okay, so it's interest, well, interestingly for me, the, one of the main reasons I became a naturopath and herbalist is when I was um, between the ages of, of uh, 11 and 16 I was a, like a really good table tennis player I used to play for the county I was like number nine in England at my, the highest um, uh, state of my play and I had very bad skin it was like borderline acne I got all these awful topical treatments that used to burn the surface of my skin off and then when I got to about so I really suffered with it no no topical uh, treatments helped but I was a vegetarian at the time and growing up in Cornwall being vegetarian it was quite tricky so basically people when, when they didn't give you meat they just gave you loads of cheese and dairy and yogurt so I was eating all of these things thinking I need these for my protein fine and then when I got to about age 16 um I decided to come off dairy and literally overnight my skin went back to baby's bum and for me and I felt better in myself as well 
less moody, more balanced, less up and down. And for me, I was like, oh my goodness. And that always, it really was the first time I had that light bulb moment of, oh my goodness, you are what you eat. How you eat can really affect how you feel. And I also used to get these little white pimples up my nose. I had the spots on my face. I used to have quite heavy discharge and all those things when I gave up dairy stopped. So that was the first time that I ever really saw the effect, effect of what you're eating change your skin. Uh, and then fast forward to training to be a naturopath and herbalist. And I would say in clinic, um, as we were discussing before, most of the people that I see are females between the ages of 30 and 60 um, with mostly with digestive complaints they come in or mental and emotional um, issues, but they come in with those complaints, but they almost always have a skin condition as well. It might not be enough to make them pick up the phone and book to see me, but they will have a skin condition, whether that's psoriasis, grumbling, eczema, you know, maybe some back knee or some acne that comes up here and then, or even just like a hormonal pimple once a month. But essentially naturopaths say that um, our skin is, is our largest organ and it reflects our internal environment. So I would say to people with skin conditions, whilst it's not nice, you're lucky. It's showing, it's nature showing you that you have an imbalance on the inside. So let's work on the imbalance on the inside. And then in a few months, it's normally about three months to treat skin conditions because you can only work at the speed of nature. And um, yeah, if you treat the inside normally in three months or so, the skin condition really changes on the outside. Actually, and a very good point because a lot of people, you know, and I get it. I mean, people are so desperate that they'll do anything. And I often think that that's why in um, the medical industry, they haven't found a cure for, you know, psoriasis or eczema or anything else because they make so much money from everyone buying creams because if you do have something that shows and it's visible it's itchy and it's bothering you you will spend hundreds a month you will do anything to you know make that go away and you want it overnight people are so desperate for it overnight mm -hmm. but that is so i love that advice of just working at the pace of nature being patient trusting that this is the best way forward and letting your body basically cleanse Essentially, naturopaths would say that um, skin conditions aren't the, aren't the issue, it's the internal environment. So that eczema, or psoriasis or acne is the symptom. The internal environment is, is, is the actual problem. So for acne, for instance, there could be a hormonal imbalance. For psoriasis, it could be a reflection of your immune system. Some people think of psoriasis is an autoimmune um, condition. There's different types of psoriasis. Um, again, with, with, with eczema, it could be because of um, food intolerances, it could be because of deficiencies, nutritional deficiencies. Eczema could be because of, um, yeah, uh, it could be dairy, could be a direct trigger. A lot of people who um, have eczema improve almost immediately, uh, not saying it vanishes almost immediately, but they'll show improvements almost immediately when they give up um, dairy products. And that's both those cows, goats, and um, sheep's dairy products across the board because the proteins are quite quite similar. Pardon me. Yeah. And also, I mean, from what I know, and obviously you know so much more than me, but all of these proteins and um, it's casomorphines, isn't it? Yeah. Is that right? In um, in <laughs> in um, in uh, dairy, um, they, I mean, they're great hormones. You know, they're made to make a baby cow or a baby goat or whatever else you know triple in size in a very short amount of time whereas us you know our, our babies grow but not at that at that amount so our breast milk that we are feeding our babies is completely different from this milk and plus we're not anyway growing at that age we're no longer a newborn baby we're no longer a child of one or two we're you know adults or teenagers or anything else so these growth hormones are coming maybe they need to come out one way or another mm -hmm. and i remember once someone pointing out to me in my case when my psoriasis was particularly bad it was on my extremities so my my hands and my feet and someone said imagine all of that all those toxins toxins in me were finding their way out and they weren't just popping up anywhere they were like going to the extreme and then there was nowhere else to go yeah. and they were coming out there yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But also with uh, back to the queso, the queso morphines, they're highly addictive. So people often say to me, you know, when we're talking about them possibly, you know, switching out dairy and switching in some plant-based products, people often say, Oh, but I love cheese so much. And I'm sure you've heard it as well with your friends. Um, cheese is a very addictive 
it's the thing that people find hardest to give up when they go plant-based and there's a reason for that because it is so addictive it, it does play to our reward centers in our brain and also when we're talking about um dairy and skin conditions as well i also want to say to some people that there's there's two things you need to consider when it comes to dairy and skin conditions because some people are lactose intolerant which can cause digestive upset and cause skin outbreaks as well but some people they switch to lactose um, free milk and they say i still have got the issues so i can't be lactose intolerant and i would say um no you could be casein intolerance a so casein is the the protein in, the protein. in cow's milk dairy and 50 i would say that because well, i do food intolerance testing and lots of people come up with casein so just because you're not lactose intolerant you still might be casein intolerant so it's sometimes good to work with a naturopath or a nutritionist to work out what it is for you so you can remove the appropriate, the appropriate um, product. And it is, I mean, as you said, it is addictive because it hits the same receptors in the brain that drugs hit, that heroin hits. Yeah. So yeah. It does make you happy. And um, yeah, on a personal level, I was super lucky because I've never, ever eaten cheese in my life. I just hated it from a baby and milk and everything else. But I would have if it was disguised in a cake or you know, something else. So it did always slip in and I was definitely intolerant to it. So that mm. definitely didn't help. Mm. So apart from giving up cheese, what, what could someone do if they're watching? I mean, I do know a lot of people who might be watching this and they're, they're little kids. I mean, bless them. Mm. You know, it's their babies. They're, they're young. Kids have eczema or they have what could be the start of psoriasis or they have dermatitis. Um, I have a lot of friends who are on this. They're not vegan but their kids are teenagers and they're starting with acne, especially their sons. So um, what would be your, your best tips? I mean, obviously the best is for someone to come and see you or someone like you and do a full analysis, but what, what are the, the best tips? Go to, you know, rules of thumb, so to speak, that will help people clear up their skin. Yeah, okay, so I treat a lot of children and the good thing about treating children is most mums or dads will do anything to get their kids skin back well. So normally the children that I treat for skin conditions are very compliant. So the first thing as unpredict uh, very predictably would be to give up dairy. You know, a lot of people naturally, they do a sharp intake of breath and go, oh, but my child, they're calcium. Now we all know that you can get calcium from lots of different um, sources such as green leafy veg, things like apricots, um, things like um, strawberries, nuts, seeds, broccoli, broccoli absolutely. sesame seeds. Yeah, sesame seeds is a great one, tahini, um, that kind of hummus, chickpeas, that kind of thing. So mm, you're making me hungry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So generally speaking, most children, if you, you know, give doing them a bit of hummus on a rice cake or give them a sesame snack or you know, blend up some broccoli with their mashed potato they're not going to get a calcium deficiency. We don't really get calcium deficiency in the Western world. It, it's a fallacy. We tend to get more problems with calcium excess, thing, things like kidney stones, that kind of thing. It's not a thing. It's we've done a, the milk marketing board's done a marketing job on us. We don't, we can get, cal where do you think cows get calcium from at the end of the day? Obviously they get it from eating grass. Um, so we can get calcium from lots of different sources. Also, you can, uh, tofu as well. Um, you can get, um, so first thing I would say to somebody is look to remove dairy. If you're scared, go and see a naturopath or a herbalist local to where you live or go and see one virtually. Uh, the second thing I would say is, um, again this is, this is some skin conditions more than others less acne more psoriasis and eczema is look at the stress in your child's life have they just started nursery have they just started school are they having friendship issues are they having boyfriend girlfriend issues because stress can play a big um role in their skin conditions so you can then support it naturally with herbs or with diet so the things that i say to support um herbs nutrition to support stress nutritionally in children are try and increase their magnesium content foods which are essentially again leafy greens uh, dark chocolate edamame beans almonds cashews that kind of thing or take a really good food state supplement um so support your child through it also if they're if they're teenagers you know for girls if they're just about to start their periods you know having their menarche you might want to support hormone balance so how do you do that you try and give them bitter foods to help their liver work optimally um so those kind of things might be sort of cucumbers on dive radish rocket that kind of thing most children don't really like that sort of thing so you might need to give them bitter herbs so something like maybe some milk thistle drops from your local herbalist or neil's yard in case of uk readers uh, watchers here um or, or go and visit a herbalist and get a little bottle of um of, of, of milk thistle and just give them as per the product label and basically 
that bitter taste when it hits the back of your um, taste buds it causes your liver to produce more bile and for your gallbladder to squeeze and release more bile and bile plays a great role in emulsifying fats helps keep us nice and regular and it also helps us um our, our optimizes liver function uh, milk thistle optimizes liver function because it's so high in um, antioxidants um, and also is hepatoprotective and hepatoregenerative. So it plays a great role in metabolizing our sex hormones. Essentially, we, we've got uh, teenagers with acne, they've got, you know, their sex hormones are going like this the entire time. And we basically want to sort of calm, calm these, the peak of the sine waves down and make it a bit more gentle. And we can do that by making sure their bowels are being kept nice and open on a, on a regular basis. So for vegans, that's not normally a problem. Lots of fiber and to, um, and to keep sure their liver's healthy, you need lots of movement, lots of fiber and um, bitter, bitter foods, really, to help with their liver. Interesting bitter foods and exercise. So exercise is very important yeah. for everyone. Well, for everyone, but anyone going through skin conditions to keep yeah, on absolutely. exercising. And milk, and milk thistle, yes. is that good for any skin conditions or would you say more just for acne? I would say for any skin conditions, milk thistle would, would only help. It would, and you can give it, it's very safe um, herb to take. You can give it to pregnant or breastfeeding women. In fact, it actually produces, makes people produce more milk as well. It's oh, called wow. a galactagogue in herbal medicine. Okay, yeah. and that would be daily as, as the label. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And um, the other thing, the other general sort of go-to things I would say for skin conditions. So the reason why I say movement is because we've got next to our blood vessels all throughout our body, we've got our lymphatic vessels and our lymphatic vessels are where the blood excretes the waste uh, products. And our lymphatic system, which is a series of blind ending tubules that goes all over the body. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a, a pump like our cardiovascular system does. So our lymphatic um, system is moved by traction, by movement. So we need to move our lymph fluid all around our body. Um, it's full of old white blood cells. It's full of uh, fat soluble toxins, that kind of thing. Um, and if we don't move, then our lymphatic system won't work well and it will show in our skin. OK, so we need to keep moving. The other thing is, is keep hydrated for skin conditions. OK, so basically and, and I'll just interrupt you. What is the optimal? What is the optimal? Let's say, is it half an hour a day of exercise? <laughs> is, you know, one hour of yoga enough? Is it do you need to sweat? Do you need to go on a trampoline and jump around? I mean, what is the ideal? I mean, <laughs> are different ideal? theories and different people like different forms of exercise, some light, some, you know, more strenuous. What is the ideal? I would say the ideal is the one that you're going to do on a regular basis. So the one that fits in with your diet and lifestyle. Now, for some people, that might be Zoom yoga class at the bottom of their bed. For some people, it might be putting on some trainers and going to run down the promenade. Um, the one that you could do on a regular basis. It's important that you like it because it's essential for the long term. You can't just think, I'm just going to exercise the next two weeks and everything's going to be fine. No, it's not a quick fix here. Your skin is a marathon, not sprint. And so you need to be doing it for the long term. But I would say whatever works for you, whether you can do three times one hour sessions a week or or um, five times 30 minutes a week. I mean, studies, if you were to do the optimal exercise for skin conditions and for lymphatic um function um nasa did some studies on rebounding so you know those little trampettes okay yeah. but rebounding thought to be awesome for your lymphatic system and for your skin but i would say it's what it's the, the exercise that you're most likely to do on a regular basis would be the best yeah it's, it, i think it's nice to sweat I, i'm a big believer in sweating um but i'm a big believer in yoga as well you know all those all those you know digestive yes, massage digestive yeah it's true. It, yeah you know and all the inverted postures, that's great to help the blood supply to your brain and help your lymphatic system, but also running or, or doing a sweatier, you know, a cardiovascular exercise. Um, running uh, is nice when you sweat, you release, um, you lose a lot of heavy metals through your sweat. So it's a great, mm -hmm. plays a great role in detoxifying through your skin. So I'm a big fan of saunas for skin conditions as well. I was going to say, and what about on the note of lymphatic, what about massages? You can oh, tell amazing. I'm a spa owner as well, because I know that we always promote that as such a good way, even if it's not a lymphatic drainage massage, just a normal massage is so good for the lymphatic system. Would that also help? Absolutely help. Oh, if I had a wand, everybody would be exercising every day, 
everybody would get a massage uh, every month and we we definitely have world peace at the end of that but yeah no any massage I mean you notice when you have a massage don't you always feel really thirsty when when they say at the end okay just get up really slowly and there's your water on the side I normally drink that pint of water and have to ask them for more um because you you get so thirsty and that's thirsty and that's because of your lymphatic your all the toxins have been pushed out of your cells into your lymphatic system a lot of your toxins not all of them um and so yeah definitely massage is awesome for your skin sitting basically the worst thing you can do for your skin is sit still eat junk food and don't drink water and I eat loads of sugar sugar oh, so is another point sugar yeah so it's not just about what you put it's not just about what you're the good things that you're having that you need is also that the things that you might be ingesting that are terrible for your skin. So the work, the thing, the like the the skin things to avoid, I would say, if you're battling a skin condition, are, are caffeine. Sorry, block your ears, but caffeine just puts your body in sympathetic nervous system dominant state. So all your um, blood supply goes to your heart, your brain, and your muscles to get away from the the source of your perceived fear. Um, so it's not great for your skin. So caffeine is shocking for your skin. Fizzy drinks and um sugar refined sugar refined carbohydrates so cakes pastries um uh you know croissants that kind of thing biscuits um just um, sugars th things that have got sweeties you know haribo that kind of thing terrible for your skin and of course dairy as we mentioned they're like my four avoids yeah fizzy drinks empty sugar dairy and um caffeine which of course are the go-to for many teenagers and youngsters yeah. so yeah absolutely absolutely unfor unfortunately but yeah so why why well well you know whilst we say oh it's hard because they they love all of those things but i always say well it's positive because it means there's lots that can be done um you know and with skin conditions some people i had terrible skin but neither of my parents had terrible skin you know some people say oh my parents oh, you know my all of my family have had terrible skin and i always say well genetics load the gun but environment pulls the trigger you know there's a whole epigenetics is a whole science in itself there's so much that can be done um, and, you know, turning on and turning off genes, that kind of thing. And also, it's not just genes. Sometimes when people say, oh, it's in the family, well, so are your eating habits. Absolutely. So, right. you know, your parents might have been, you know, also having, yeah. you know, downing those KFCs with you or whatever else, or, you yeah. know, yeah. tucking or smoking. into the fatty roast. Yeah, or your parents could have smoked around you. They, they could have smoked when you were in utero because, you know, in the past, my gran was told it was absolutely fine to smoke. And then my dad was born this tiny little three pound baby with awful chest. And then I, he had me and I don't have touch wood, don't have any respiratory complaints mm. at all, thankfully. Yeah, so it's ge genetics does play a role, but environment can do so much. So please don't lose hope with your skin conditions. And also with skin conditions, I say to some people, they can get a little bit worse before they get better. Um, so to bear that in mind and be realistic about your expectations. The thing is, if you put on a cream from the doctor, you know, a hydrocortisone cream and your skin gets better, better in a few days, you know, you you are. And there's a place for that. You know, if you've got a child who's screaming and they've got cracked skin and they're, they're scratching it and they can't sleep, of course, you know, use a smidge of it. But look at the big picture behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, if it's if it seem if it's like unbelievable, that it's working that quickly. Just think, what is in that to be working so quickly? Yeah, and question that. And long-term use of um, hydrocortisone creams can thin the skin and lead to, you know, problems for additional problems in the long term, unfortunately. But, you know, I think there's a place for it if you're, you know, if your child is really... Oh, definitely. You don't want to get a secondary infect. <laughs> so I'm you know, not dismissing it entirely. There is a place for it. But ultimately, root cause, look at what's the underlying cause of your skin condition. And yeah, and sometimes you do need that quick fix. Just yeah. Not, not just physically and also just mentally. I mean, yeah, I remember when my, my psoriasis was really bad and um, my GP, who's, um, who's also a believer in natural medicine, mm -hmm. oh, I went to see him and I was like, okay, what can we do? And he just, I couldn't believe it. He went cortisone cream and I was like, what? And he's like, it is that bad. And that's when I knew. And I just said, right, that's it. I'm booking to get a Jordan to the Dead Sea. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at least it helped for that little bit. And then I could walk and you know, and start all the other things going to yeah. start a Absolutely. healing process. Oh, completely. Yeah. And also the other nutrient I was going to say, and you made me think about it with the Dead Sea, obviously the Dead Sea is absolutely full of magnesium. So we can bring the Dead Sea into our homes by having Epsom salt bath. So if you look, if you ever buy any Epsom salt, just make sure it says magnesium sulfate on the packet and you need to put two cups in per whole bath. 
and you okay. should try and soak in it for about 20 minutes three times a week you know the fresh salts each time so don't bother buying those little ones from the health food store those little packs of Epsom salts that'll go in one bath get it online get a massive sack or I get this big bucket delivered um, online and Epsom salts can be a great way of helping um, people pull out impurities and also they help you absorb um, magnesium really efficiently like transdermal magnesium absorption can be a really important supply of magnesium for people who don't like green leafy veg nuts seeds that kind of thing and also it can help children who have got that itchy skin it can help them sleep you would think oh is it going to sting weirdly in a whole bath you don't really you don't really feel it doesn't sting at all um, and also yeah magnesium nature's tranquilizer it, it can help help you feel calm happy satisfied and it can help you sleep as well so I'm a huge natural most naturopaths are a huge fan of um magnesium what, what about apple cider vinegar I know a lot of people try that as well um and then and, and I hear many people get confused and they're like oh I don't know what's better for my bath the epsom salts or the apple cider or they do a bit of both I would I wouldn't really be putting up uh, apple cider vinegar in the bath because the mother culture is heat sensitive so you don't really want to be putting I mean perhaps it's just me but I had like my bath quite hot so you wouldn't want you'd have to probably put a lot in a bath I would think apple cider vinegar how I normally take it would be um internally just either take it neat or in the, mix up with a little bit of water and just drink it um it, it's great for our internal environment it's a very probiotic food and it's also full of digestive enzymes which is great but they don't directly um help your skin condition okay that's good indirectly they're good but they don't directly help your skin. yeah yeah and of course sun i mean i know we're like now we're in december even in cyprus it's not so sunny today but yeah um but i i mean i have heard so many people say and it's so true that even even living in a country that's not so sunny you do get the sun more often than a lot of people think so they say even 10 minutes on your face or just you know pull your sleeve up and it yeah. helps with the vitamin d i think also it's important to mention obviously we're all we've all got the fear of skin cancer you know drilled into us from an early age especially i'm sure in sunny climes like where you live mm. but um, it is also really important to get some full spectrum unfiltered uva and uvb rays each day and i'm not condoning anybody burns themselves but you know have some time of the day where you go outside you know maybe outside the hours of 11 and 1 in the uk um, where you have, you know, your bare skin is exposed to the sun. To, so you get that unfiltered UVA and UVB because most sunscreens, are, you know, are blocking those. So we need those for our body's um, conversion of vitamin D in our, in our skin. Uh, and vitamin D, uh, great for our immune system. So good for skin conditions that have an autoimmune component. So things like psoriasis, some forms of eczema, um, rosacea, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you wouldn't believe it, but in... Um... I think in general in the Mediterranean, not just in Cyprus, um, we have really uh, problems with vitamin D. Um, a lot of men and especially women. And I'm sure it's all to do with the sunblock because I mean, it's so sunny and, and realistically the sun is so strong. We do have to be careful. Yes, of course. So, you know, people do go to the beach, it is around midday. They do lather themselves up. They it will stay in the shade. And really they're not getting any, even if they're getting tanned, they're not getting any direct rays at all. Um, no, so I would say by all means you know slap it on in the middle of the day try and go for a mineral um, sunblock rather than a chemical sunblock that would be my naturopathic advice and there's lots of brands on the market now with the minerals to so look for like zinc oxide that kind of thing um, but also I would say well maybe earlier in the morning where you're not likely to get burned in the Cyprus you know maybe between like ten, nine and ten in the morning could you sit out in the garden and have a coffee and just get some unfiltered rays on your skin and then put on the cream when you're likely to get burned. And the other nutrients I want to mention for skin health are zinc and um, adequate intake of zinc and also adequate intake of um, essential fatty acids. Okay, so, which are what? What are the best forms? I know that Brazil nuts, also you didn't mention selenium. I, um, I know yeah, that Brazil so nuts are super good. Um, I, I remember taking, I think, trying to have eight um, Brazil nuts a day, which was quite yummy. Um, <laughs> yeah. my goal to get enough selenium in me oh um, absolutely so any of your vitamins yeah. so vit vitamin a c e so think aces a c e and selenium great for our skin and zinc as well and you know, the simple thing about this is that they almost i feel like a bit of a crack record really because most of those fruit and veg you most of those things you can find in a really healthy intake of fruit and veg per day so vitamin a or beta beta carotene the more active form that's found in things like 
red peppers, carrots, sweet potato, all your orange colored foods, apricots, that kind of thing. So brilliant, eat them cooked, eat them raw, fantastic. Um, vitamin C, obviously found in things like rose hip syrup, tomatoes, oranges, black currants, frozen berries, fresh berries, that kind of thing. Um, vitamin E is found in things like nuts and seeds, um, and it's found and and then selenium obviously in nuts and seeds particularly brazil nuts i think brazil nuts are yummy have you ever tried brazil nut butter omg you could just eat that stuff out of the jar no it's i haven't tried that but i just love them like they're so oh like chunky and so yummy i put them in everything satays smoothies on a rice cake you name it eat, standing up by the fridge eating out of the jar i'm all over the okay. nut butters oh, i have to try and that the, and what about zinc yeah, and so zinc, leafy greens. I mean, where's the best place yeah. to zinc from? So zinc again, leafy greens, nuts, seeds. Vegetarians and vegans have to make a real effort to get a lot of zinc because uh, um, a lot of people get zinc from um, eggs and um, seafood, that kind of thing. So we have to make sure we get lots of nuts and seeds. And my recommendation to a lot of my patients is get an old jam jar and do like a five seed sprinkle. So get any five seeds that you love and just put them in a jar shake them up and then just have them in your kitchen by your oils and your vinegars. So whenever you make a meal, whether it's cooked or raw, um, you can just up and upgrade that plate of food by giving yourself a lovely five seed sprinkle and your hair, nails and skin will thank you for it. Uh, also your hormones as well with zinc, um, especially for people trying for a baby. Um, and zinc is, um, yeah, I, you, or you can take a food state supplement, like a multi vitamin that would have zinc in it at a good level if you're worried about deficiency so people and with skin flax and I, I i know i mean i take flax ground flaxseed every day just yeah. as a go-to but um i know that that's also i know people who take flaxseed oil for skin conditions yeah so there's two things there with flaxseed so you get going on to the next nutrient so essential fatty acids are really important for our skin particularly the omega-3 fatty acids the long chain fatty acids nobody has a deficiency in omega-6 lots of people have a deficiency in omega-3. So omega-6 tends to be found in things like shop-bought pastries, biscuits, that kind of thing, um, veg processed vegetable oils, so like sunflower oil, um, and like your cheap sort of veg oils that they fry chips in in the chippy. Um, but omega-3 is only found in a few um, plant-based sources. So it's found in things like chia seeds, walnuts, linseeds, um, and in algal oil. So when people take, uh, when, and also linseeds, but when people take linseeds, um, if they take milled ground linseeds, that's really good as a, a as like a fiber supplement. So when you, when you drink water, it swells up inside of you and acts as like an intestinal broom. However, um, when you mill those seeds, unless you mill them every day, that oil inside of the seeds is likely to oxidize. So some people buy the packets of already milled seeds because they think it saves me a job. I would advise more get the whole seeds and grind them at home but don't rely on that for your essential fatty acid source do take an oil or an oil supplement so if you don't mind the taste of linseed oil take it a dessert spoon a day off the spoon or you could take a linseed oil supplement in the form of capsules or you could take an algal um an algal omega-3 supplement because some people um myself included genetically don't process their um fatty acids they don't um convert their fatty acids to the body ready form um efficiently um and i did a genetic test on myself because i offer genetic testing and i i don't process my essential fatty acids as well so i take an algal form of epa and dha because um that's basically if you took linseed oil your body has to work to convert it there's like a several steps in the chain of processing and some people don't do that efficiently so i take the end products of the processing i just take epa and dha what about in. walnuts what if someone likes walnuts and they can eat that every day can that yeah um, can that it. be enough or if, as a, most kids don't like walnuts so there's issue with compliance there but most uh, some adult fit i would say you know a lot of adults don't i love walnuts but a lot of adults don't but i would say everybody would do well to I mean, every a vegan or vegetarian would do well to eat daily walnuts brazil nuts try and get your your seed sprinkle in avocados that kind of thing because obviously the the non-vegetarians and vegans in the world they're getting their omega fats from cold water oily fish but then you've got the whole conversation about heavy metal toxicity which is a whole nother conversation but vegans and vegetarians which, don't worry about that which is also not great for um for skin conditions no not to mention okay. the sea environment and the yeah. you, you know the, the yeah diversity that kind mm -hmm. of yeah so the oceans but 
Yeah, so yeah, heavy metals are not great for skin conditions. Sweating is a great way to remove heavy metals. If you've got any, if you think you've got, if you think heavy metals are playing a role in your skin condition, you might want to look at taking some nutritional chelating agents. So chelating agents are things that bind to the heavy metal and then they remove it through your bowel. So um, to, um, such chelating agents that we use as naturopaths are like um, charcoal activated charcoal or chlorella which is obviously uh, a superfood powder um so then yeah. how would you take activated charcoal i'm always intrigued it, with this because there's something i've never that? done how how would you even where do you even buy this from and how do you even take it well if you live near a hipster town like brighton you can go and get your activated charcoal smoothie which basically looks like a load of rainwater in a jar but you can get activated charcoal in a powder format so you add it to your um you could add it to your hummus or to your smoothie and then just drink it i mean to be honest the vets gave us activated charcoal for the dog when he was up unwell not so long ago because it helps settle their stomach and gets rid of what i presume it does the same as it does in humans it it binds onto whatever is irritating the dog's stomach and then it eliminates it through the bowel so yeah that's how, how much take. should someone take and for how long if they're worried about their heavy metal it really would depend i would probably say seek as the prof seek professional assistance because it'll be unique to you you could be a plumber mm -hmm. that's got heavy metal issues because you've been working with lead pipes over the years you could be a, a woman in her 30s that's trying for a baby but you've worked in a paint factory all your life you know we used to use leads in paints heavy metals in paints you could have worked in a lab where you're exposed to heavy metals, mercury in a vac vaccination lab, you know, years ago, whatever, a vaccine lab years ago. Who's to say? So it really is dependent on the so individual. It's very individual. Like with yeah. everything, everything we're talking about, by the way, everyone, it's always good, always good to get professional advice. Yeah, but these are like some general nutritional takeaways. So basically, I would say for skin conditions, make sure you're getting your zinc, your magnesium, your, your antioxidants. So it's your vitamin A, C. E, your zinc, your magnesium, and your omega fats, and make sure that you're not taking in too much of, of the, the not great stuff. So the caffeine, the fizzy drinks, the um, not drinking enough water, and your um, and sugar, uh, sugar, yeah, keeping sugar yeah. to a low. Because and of course, no dairy. Stop the dairy, everyone. The dairy, yeah. Number preaching one. to converted on here, I'm sure. But you know, for people who are ve vegetarian and thinking of going over to veganism. I would say that most people report a, an improvement in skin conditions when, when they jump over. But, you know, everybody does it in their own time. Rachel, you're a superstar. You have given everyone so much to digest. I'm sure a lot of people will have to rewatch this again and they'll be taking notes because this is a lifesaver. I speak from experience when you are in the midst of a skin condition, whatever it is. And however, someone will tell you, oh, it's nothing is going to go. And you hear all these amazing stories of people who are worse off than you. And it did clear. Yeah. You know, there are moments where <clears throat> that just doesn't help. You're like, I know it and I know I should be positive. But you just feel, you know, just so awful with it. Um, and I really feel for teenagers who have acne because it's on their face. And now, my goodness, this new phrase. I've said it so many times on Cook Beaver, MACME, that I heard just this week. You know, from oh, yeah. all these masks. I mean, the last few posts I've done, I haven't put on any makeup because I've been like, I've woken up in the morning and said, oh my goodness, I need days of just letting my face breathe. Um, I've tried not to come to the office. So I haven't been sitting here with a mask on. You know, it's just crazy. And people I know that have never had any spots in their life are suddenly like counting seven or eight. It's mental. I'm all from these masks. So. It is a thing. And I saw somebody the other day that um, she had this outbreak of this sort of like uh, water filled vesicle, liquid fluid filled vesicles on her lips from wearing her mask, from where she'd been talking. She's a salesperson and she'd been talking those and had been brushing against the mask. And she had this really red and sore thing. I mean, it's such an occupational hazard these days, isn't it? Awful. No, get home. Right. put that mask away and get that you know get that fresh air on your skin as much as possible I yeah would fresh say. air and I, i'm personally and i'm laughing i'm like oh i shouldn't be dealing with acne at this stage of my life and yeah in the morning now i put yeah we were saying about dead sea i try and put some just a bit of dead sea mask on or even an acne mask back to being a teenager just on like you know my t-zone or yeah on my cheeks and what can you do we'll all just try our best so um of course. yeah so everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to Cook Vegan. Those of you lucky enough to be on our Facebook group, you saw this first. The rest of you watching this on YouTube, do subscribe and don't miss any more of these amazing interviews and lots of cook vlogs, cooking demonstrations and unique recipes by myself posted here. Um, and if there is anything you guys would like to see or hear more, even from Rachel, we can 
answer your questions. You can type them below. We'll make sure Rachel sees them and we'll get back to you. And do um, click on her link, follow her, and um, you can book your appointment over Zoom. So wherever you are in the world, you can have your tailor-made perfect solution to help you on your um, perfect ideal skin journey. You will get there. I promise you that, guys. Oh my goodness, my skin journey is up and down. And yes, there are times in my life it will come out again. I feel it. Um, you know, now I'm exhausted. I've been breastfeeding for a year. There are little breakouts here and there, but I whip it under control. We can do this, can't we, Rachel? We can. There's, all, there's always a way. There's always something that can be done. Yeah, absolutely. What a, what a lovely way to end this interview. So thank you so much, Rachel. You are a superstar. Namaste. We love you lots. And everyone at Click Vegan, we'll see you soon. Take care and click vegan.